All right, the NFL wildcard playoffs kick off Saturday in Buffalo, the first game of the week, Indianapolis, six and a half point road dogs to face the Bills. From week nine on, the Bills have averaged 37.9 points per game. The Bills have allowed only 18.8 points per game over their last six. The Bills running backs are averaging only 79.6 yards per game. Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, that is their average combined. Football Outsiders DVOA Metrics ranks the Bills as having the league's best first down passing game with Josh Allen completing 72.1% of his first down passes and an average of nine yards per attempt. 64% of the Bills' first down plays have been a drop back and pass. Buffalo also boasts the league's best third down conversion rate at 49.7%. The Bills' weakness besides the run game is their tackling. They rank fourth worst in the league, missing 123 tackles this year, mainly against running backs in the open field. Taylor, Hines, look out for them too in Indy's backfield. Buffalo has given up, has given up 11 plays of 20 plus yards to running backs this year, the second highest out of the playoff teams. The Bills haven't won a playoff game since 1995, despite getting into the playoffs in three of the last four years. Buffalo is 8-0 against spread their last eight games overall, covering by an average of 15 points per game. They have been explosive lately on offense. The Bills went 13-3 straight up in 11-5 against spread this season with a 7-1 straight up and a 6-2 against spread record at home this year. The last five Colts games versus teams with winning records have all gone over the number. Six of the last seven wildcard games India's played have gone under the total. India's 0-3-1 against spread their last four as a dog. The Colts' offensive line only surrendered 19 sacks this season. Only Derrick Henry has more rushing yards than Jonathan Taylor over the last six weeks. Taylor has 1,169 rushing yards, 253 alone last week, 5 yards per carry and 11 TDs in his rookie year. Indy went 11-5 straight up and 8-8 against spread this season, while going 5-3 both straight up and against spread on the road this year. Colts were at plus 10 in the turnover margin. That's a huge difference, and that's a positive heading into the playoffs. India's 2-4 and four against spread their last six overall, plus their last six versus the Bills. India allowed an average of 90.5 yards per game on the ground, second best in the league this year, eighth in yards allowed per game at 348.4. The Colts are 7-3 straight up and 5-4-1 against spread their last 10 versus Buffalo. The under is 7-3 in their last 10 meetings. The home team is 5-0 against spread in their last five matchups. The Colts are 0-3-1 against their spread their last four in Buffalo. The under is hit in each of the last four meetings between these two. The under is 6-1 in their last seven times they've played in Buffalo. The favorite is 4-1 against the spread in their last five meetings. I like the Bills to get their first win since 1995. First playoff win, sorry, since 1995. And I will take them to cover the spread. Game 2 sees the 10-6 Rams on the road to face Seattle. Seattle, three-point home favorites in this one. In 18 career games versus the Rams, Russell Wilson is 8-10 straight up with 11 interceptions and a QB rating of 94.5. And he's been sacked 72 times in those 18 games. In two games this year, Wilson, well, eh, off and on. They were 1-1 against each other this year, so I'm not going to read too much into that. The Rams are 4-10 against spread their last 14 meetings in Seattle. The home team is 11-5 against spread their last 16 meetings. The under is hit in 15 of the last 22 games between these two teams. Russell Wilson is 4-1 straight up and against spread in first round playoff games, covering the spread by an average of 5 points per game. The under is hit in 20 of the 31 games started by either Wilson or Goff this season. Uh, Look for Goff's health. He is coming off that thumb surgery, so that will be a question mark. Is he going to play? How effective will he be if he does play? The Rams' second-half defense ranks second in the league, allowing an average of only 6.7 points in the second half, and they possess the NFL's stingiest fourth-quarter defense, allowing only 3.8 points per fourth quarter on average. That is phenomenal numbers for the Rams. The Rams went 10-6 and six straight up, 9-7 against spread this year. We'll go on 4-4 four four straight up, and, against, and it's on 
and against spread on the road this year. Sir, having trouble talking. The Rams are 21 and 26 straight up all time in the playoffs and are 3 and 6 straight up all time in wildcard games. LA is 4 and 2 straight up this year versus teams that made the playoffs. They lost twice to the 6 and 10 Niners and they lost to the New York Jets. Pathetic. The Rams allow an average of 18.5 points per game, 281.9 yards per game, and 190.7 passing yards per game, all tops in the NFL. Their run defense ranks third, allowing an average of only 91.3 yards per game. Goff, like I said, he's day to day, keep an eye on that. And obviously, all the COVID issues with every game, especially the Steelers-Browns game, that is the last game of the weekend. Seattle went 12-4 straight up and 8-8 eight and eight against spread this year with a 7-1 straight up and a 6-2 and two against spread record at home this season. The Rams are 6-4 and four straight up and 5-5 five five and five against spread their last 10 versus the Hawks. The total's gone under the number in 11 of the last 13 Rams games. LA is 5-2 and two straight up their last 7 versus Seattle. The Rams are 3 and 13 straight up in their last 16 games in Seattle. Seattle is 4 and 8 against spread their last 12 overall. The total's gone under in 7 of the last 8 Seattle games. The total's gone under in 12 of the last 16 meetings between these two. Seattle is 6 and 1 straight up their last 7 overall and 7 and 1 straight up their last 8 at home. The Hawks are 17 17 straight up all time in the playoffs and are 9 and 5 straight up in the wild card round. Wilson set career highs in completion percentage at 68.8%. TD passes with 40 and interceptions with 13 this season. Wilson was Seattle's second leading rusher with 513 yards on the ground and a pair of touchdowns to go with it. Seattle is 10-4 against spread their last 14 at home versus the Rams. The Rams are the eighth team in the last 25 seasons to lead the league in scoring defense, total defense, pass defense in a single season. Five of the previous seven teams went on to the Super Bowl. LA has scored less than 24 points and fewer than 340 total yards in each of their last four games. The Rams have held their opponents to less than 20 points eight times this season. I like this game. I think that Seattle will get it done at home. I think that big 20-9 win the last time these two teams played, if I remember correctly. I think Seattle will do enough to get them, especially with Goff's health. That's the main reason I am liking the Hawks on Saturday. Tampa Bay, eight-point road favorites in Washington to face the football team. The under is hit in each of the Bucks' last five playoff games as a favorite. The Bucks are 11-5 straight up and 9-7 against spread this year, with a 6-2 straight up and 4-4 against spread road record. Tampa is 0-4 against the spread their last four wildcard games. The Bucks are 1-8-1 against spread their last 10 Saturday games. The under is 9-0 in the football team's last nine games on grass. They will be playing on grass in Washington this weekend. The under is hit in each of the last five Washington games. The underdog is 5-0-1 against spread in their last six meetings. The road team is 5-0-1 against spread their last six matchups. The Bucks are 3-0-1 against the spread their last four in Washington. The under is 4-1 their last five meetings in Washington. The under is 5-2 in their last seven matchups. Washington ranked 31st in offensive efficiency this year, 36.1. The Bucks have covered five of their seven games when the under is hit, and the under were 6-2 in the football team's home games this year. The football team has the league's third best defense. Their offense ranks dead last. Tampa is 5-5 straight up, 5-4-1 against spread their last 10 versus Washington. The Bucks are 2-4 straight up their last 6 in Washington. Tampa 5 and 0 straight up their last 5 road games. The Bucks are 2 and 8 straight up their last 8 games in January. The football team's 5 and 2 against spread their last 7 games overall. The total's gone under in 5 of the last 7 meetings. 5 of Washington's last 6 games at home have gone under the total. Tom Brady is on a wild card team for the first time in his career and this is his 18th year in the playoffs, first time as a wild card matchup. Uh, Brady has more playoff wins in his career with 30 than the whole Washington football team franchise has with 25 in their history. Brady is 1-3 straight up versus the NFC East in the playoffs. It's the only division in the NFL that Brady has a losing record in the playoffs against. He's also lost three straight games against the NFC East in the playoffs. Alex Smith has won each of his last five starts with Washington as a starter. 
what a comeback that is the story what do you have 17 operations in the span of a year or 18 months or whatever the fuck it was absolutely insane it's the best comeback story since bo jackson in my opinion you got to check him out washington's five and one overall with him as a starter two and eight with anybody else starting at quarterback for them Washington is first team since the 2013 Seahawks to allow fewer than 20 points in their last seven games of a regular season. Absolutely phenomenal. That defense is for real. That front seven will get their hands on Brady, and that's why he has trouble against the NFC East, because traditionally, or at least recently in the Brady era, they have had excellent pass rushing defensive teams in that division. Will be at the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Giants, the football team. It hasn't matter which one they usually do. And Chase Young, oh my goodness, this could be a big day. I am picking Washington to win this game outright and therefore cover the spread. That is my upset of the weekend. Next on the list, Baltimore, 11 and 5 at Tennessee, 11 and 5. A rematch of last year's playoffs. The under is 7-0 the last seven playoff games. Baltimore was a favorite. The last five January games for the Ravens have gone under the total. The under is 3-0-1 in Baltimore's last four wildcard games. The Ravens are 6-0 against spread their last six overall. Baltimore went 11-5 straight up and 10-5-1 against spread this year with a 6-2 straight up and 5-2-1 against spread record on the road. The Ravens are 4-6 straight up and 3-6-1 against spread their last 10 versus Tennessee. Baltimore 6-0 against spread their last... Oh, I already said that one. The Ravens are 2-4 straight up their last 6 versus Tennessee. Tennessee is 5-12-1 against spread their last 18 at home versus the Ravens. The Titans went 11-5 straight up, 7-9 against spread this season with a 5-3 straight up and 4-4 against spread record at home. The total's gone over in 12 of the Titans' last 15 games overall. The over is 6-0 in Tennessee's last 6 games as a dog. The over is 5-0 the last 5 Titans games as home dogs. The under is 5-0 in Tennessee's last 5 wildcard games. The road team is 3-0-1 in the last four meetings between these two. The Ravens are 3-7-1 against spread their last 11 meetings. The under is 9-4-1 their last 14 meetings. Last year's playoff saw Derrick Henry run for 195 yards versus the Ravens, including the 29-yard overtime touchdown to seal the deal. Derrick Henry has a career average of 126 rushing yards per game in the playoffs, the second most in NFL history with a minimum five games played. Tennessee gave up 36 TDs through the air this season, which is tied for the most ever by a playoff team. Lamar has tossed three TDs in his first two playoff games. Both were losses. Elias Sports Bureau research shows that the Ravens 1,337 rushing yards over their past five games of the season is the most by any team in a five-game span since the beginning of the Super Bowl era in 1966. Baltimore has averaged 30.6 points per game in the regular season with Jackson as their starting QB, but only 14.5 points per game in his two career playoff starts. Out of 589 teams that have made the playoffs since the year 2000, the 2000 Rams are the only team to allow more points per game at 29.4 than the 2020 Tennessee Titans who allowed 27.4 this year. This is the fifth playoff meeting between these two teams. The road team has won all of the previous four games. The Ravens allowed the second fewest points per game this year at 18.9, while the Titans averaged 30.7 points per game. That's the fourth best in the NFL. Last season, Lamar Jackson became the first player in the Super Bowl era with at least 100 rushing yards and 300 passing yards in a playoff game. I think it was 506 or 508 total yards he had, something like that. I didn't write that part down, but I know it was just over that 500, and he lost the game. I think this is where Baltimore and Lamar Jackson get their revenge. I will take Baltimore to win and cover the spread, but if it creeps up above that three then I would probably lean to Tennessee because I don't think this is going to be a blowout. I think with Derrick Henry, that's enough to chew up clock, keep the game close. And I think that if the spread gets to three and a half, four, I'd be sliding in Tennessee to cover the spread, but still on Baltimore to win that by three, four points. Next up, Chicago, the Bears, eight and eight in New Orleans to face the Saints. New Orleans is 10 point home favorites, biggest spread of the weekend. Chicago, they are 0 6 against spread their last four, 
their last six road games first a team with a winning home record the over is 5-1 and in the Bears' last six games overall. Chicago is 0-3-1 against spread their last four in New Orleans. The Bears are 1-5-1 against spread in their last seven meetings. Chicago is 4-6 straight up and 4-4-2 and against spread in their last 10 versus the Saints. Chicago is 1-5 straight up their last six games in New Orleans. The Bears are 7-1 against spread versus the NFC South. The Bears are 3-7 straight up their last 10 overall. The Saints are 7-1-1 against spread their last nine overall. New Orleans is 4-2 against spread their last six versus the Bears. Kamara and Michael Thomas both could be back for New Orleans. That would be huge for them. Michael Thomas, I believe he's first. He's top two or three in yards, receiving yards per game for, some, for a receiver in the playoffs with a minimum five games played. I forget the numbers. I just remember hearing that somewhere. Um, the last time the Bears covered a spread where they were a seven and a half plus point underdog was November 17th, November 2017 versus the New Orleans Saints. Chicago made the playoffs without a top 10 defense for the first time since 1977 and in that year they lost in the divisional round. The Bears only defeated one team with a winning record all season this year and that was Tampa Bay in week five. Drew Brees is 5-0 straight up with no interceptions and 10 TDs versus the Bears over the last 10 years. Chicago hasn't beat the Saints since week 15, 2008. I think the Saints definitely win this game. I think Chicago keeps it close. I don't think this is going to be a plus 10 for New Orleans. I, I'm definitely taking Chicago on the spread and New Orleans on the straight up win. Final game of the weekend, Cleveland Browns in Pittsburgh to face the Steelers. These two met last week. Steelers sat a bunch of players. Some were regulars like Big Ben. Some were because of COVID. Some were because of injury. What not, what not. Both these teams, this is a game you really got to keep your eye on the rosters because there's a lot of COVID issues going on with both teams the last couple weeks. Cleveland is 11 and 5 straight up and 6 and 10 against spread this year with a 5 and 3 straight up and 3 and 5 against spread record on the road. The Browns are 3 and 8 against spread their last 11 overall. The Steelers went 12 and 4 straight up 10 and 6 against spread this year with a 7 1 straight up and 5 and 3 against spread record at home. Pittsburgh is 7-2-1 and one straight up and 5-4-1 and one against spread their last 10 versus Cleveland. The over is 6-1-1 one one in Pittsburgh's last 8 home playoff games. The home team is 5-1 against spread in their last 6 meetings. Cleveland's 1-4-1 against spread in their last 6 matchups. Browns are 1-4 against spread in their last 5 meetings. Cleveland's 0-10 straight up their last 10 games in Pittsburgh. Last game between these two, Nick Chubb ran 14 times for 108 yards, 7.7 yards per carry, and a touchdown. Pittsburgh has the league's third best defense, but they rank 11th against the run. That's why I mentioned that key matchup in the backfield for Cleveland. They like to ground and pound, and they like to control the clock. The Browns' pass defense ranks 22nd in the league, giving up 247.6 yards per game. The Steelers are 14-5-3 against spread their last 22 games in January. Pittsburgh is 7-2 against spread in their last nine playoff games at home. The Browns are 9-25-1 against spread in their last 35 games versus the AFC North. Cleveland is 8-26-2 against spread in their last 36 games versus a team with a winning record. The Browns' last win in Pittsburgh came when Baker Mayfield was only 8 years old in Week 5, 2003. Pittsburgh is 35-7-1 straight up versus the Browns since 2000, including the playoffs tied for the second most wins by any one team versus any one opponent in that time frame. The Browns haven't won a playoff game since 1994. That's the fourth longest active streak in the NFL. The Steelers only allowed 14 sacks all year on over 650 pass attempts, the fewest ever allowed in the Super Bowl era. In 68 first-round playoff games played outdoors from 2002 to 2019, the total has gone under the number 50 times, hitting at a 74% rate. You might want to look at which games you like under. There could be quite a few, as that is a high, high percentage. And the road team is 6-2 and two straight up the last two playoffs in the wild card round. I hope you guys like the picks. Take the numbers for what they are. you got to make your decisions for what they are. I'll have my phone back soon. Peace.